In this video, you will learn how to configure subscription type in-app purchases through App Store Connect. I'm going to show you all of the tips and best practices to set up your in-app subscriptions, and I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step just how to do that through the App Store Connect portal. Hey Code Crew, it's Chris and welcome to Code with Chris, the place to be if you want to learn how to code and build apps. This is the second lesson in our Revenue Cat video series. If you missed the first lesson, be sure to check out the playlist right there. Here's where we are in our seven step process. All right, let's get started. Now let's configure our in-app subscriptions. I do want to mention that Revenue Cat has an awesome piece of documentation they call the iOS product setup. And this one guides you through the process as well as providing very helpful hints on how to name your identifiers and how to set up your in-app subscriptions for future scalability. So I'll be referring to this documentation as we go through this process. And I'll also link to this in the description below the video. All right, so we're going to set up two in-app subscriptions for this demo. Uh, one is going to be a yearly access to unlock pro features. And the second one is a monthly access to unlock the pro features. So both subscriptions, they unlock the same level of features. It's just that one is yearly recurring and the other is monthly recurring. All right, so let's go ahead and select auto renewable subscription and click create. Now you're going to be able to specify two things here for your first subscription. One is a reference name, and this is not user facing. This is just for your own reporting purposes. So here you can use a name that would make sense to you. So for example, I might choose uh, Rev RevCat demo annual, and uh, I might put the price or something like that. So let's say uh, $59.99. And let's see what Revenue Cat recommends down here. So here, here they are going through the process that we have. Um, and so they put the, when it recurs, the price and also any introductory offers, because with your subscription, you are able to offer some sort of a discounted access or trial, even like maybe a $0 free trial, um, for a specified amount of time for first time users. So that's, uh, in their documentation, this is what they're setting up. And I'll show you how to set this up later, but, um, for my demo, I wasn't planning to do an introductory offer at all. So there's, it's straight off the bat going to be recurring at $59.99. Uh, and then also product ID. So this one is very important to note if, and here it also points it out a little bit. So this product ID is a unique ID for your in-app purchase. And this ID spans across your entire account across all apps. So whatever product ID you put in here and you create this in-app subscription, even if you delete this in-app purchase product in the future, you're not going to be able to reuse the same ID. So it makes sense to have a little bit of organization and a sort of naming convention here. And if you're following this documentation, this is what they recommend. So a good way to keep these IDs organized is this sort of convention here app underscore price, underscore duration, underscore the introductory duration and introductory price. So that results in something like this screenshot here, RC underscore 3999, underscore one year, underscore one week at $0. So that's free. So for us, uh, we're going to put something like RCD for revenue cat demo. Uh, I'm going to put one. Oh, actually the next thing is the price. And then I would put uh, one Y as one year. I'm going to go ahead and click next. I don't have any introductory offer, so I'm not going to fill in anything there. And now we're going to be prompted to create a subscription group. So what is that? If you read this blurb, it actually explains it pretty well. Um, it's basically grouping together different subscription products that the users can switch between, but they can only be subscribed to one of those products inside that group at once. So for example, in this demo app, we're offering to unlock some sort of pro access, right? And we want to let the user switch between yearly membership and monthly membership. They might choose to upgrade or downgrade at any time, right? But they can only have one of them active. We would put both of those in the same subscription group. So that's what we're going to do here. And if we take a look at the documentation, 
let's take a look at right here. Um, they point out here that the reference name for the subscription group is actually not user facing. So you're going to be able to, it, it's only you that is going to see this in your reporting. So use something that makes sense to you. All right. So for me, I'm going to call this, uh, the rev cat demo, uh, pro access subscription group. And the reason I'm not putting the price or anything in here right now uh, is because I'm going to be putting both the monthly and the yearly in the same group to let the user switch between the two. And they're at different prices. And so I'm not going to put the price in the group or anything like that. So users can only subscribe to one subscription within a group at a time, but can change subscriptions within the group as often as they like. All right, so let's go ahead and create this subscription group. And then we're going to be able to configure our in-app subscription finally. Don't be worried if this takes a little bit. Um, this process I've found in creating a new in-app subscription or in-app product uh, takes a little while for it to crunch behind the scenes. While that's going on, let's flip back to the documentation. So here we can see that the next step is going to be setting the subscription duration and the price and the price is going to be uh, different depending on uh, lo the locale and the currency. So you're going to be able to fine tune all of that. Uh, and then there's going to be a separate tab for introductory offers. And according to this documentation is showing you how to set a free one week trial. So that's where you would set your introductory offers. And then the next step would be to add localization. So depending on which uh, language you can provide uh, different names for this subscription, let's go back to app store connect and see. All right. So we've got our in app uh, purchase subscription here. So here's the reference name. You can see this is the group reference name cleared for sale. If you want this to be available for sale, when it's approved, you enable this. For the duration, this is where we're going to set this to one year because this is our annual subscription. And then uh, let's hit save first. And then we're going to hit this plus button besides subscription pricing. And I'm actually going to choose, I'm going to choose USD because the 59.99 I was referring to USD. So you can see here, there are a lot of different um, sort of price levels, but it's not a free form text field. So you can't just specify any number you want, but I think uh, there are a lot of options here going up by $1 amounts. Okay. So let's click next. And then we're going to be able to specify different prices for the different uh, currencies and actually countries and regions. So for example, for Canadians, I can specify, you know, a different amount. Okay. So I'm just going to go with the defaults here I'm going to click create. And uh, all right, that's great. And before we hit save, this is where you can also put those introductory offers. You can also customize some of this uh, promotional offers, but we're not going to do that in this video. Let's go ahead and hit save. All right, let's go back to our subscription by clicking this breadcrumb up here. Now uh, we are going to set our localizations next. So go down here, hit this plus icon. Let's choose uh, English US. And let's choose a subscription display name and description. Now, if you're unsure about where this is going to show up, because this is user facing, uh, revenue cat has a handy diagram that shows you exactly where that is. And so this is what we're filling out right now for English us. And they have a tip here. Use the same description display name and the description for all of your products that unlock the same level of access. This results in a much cleaner app store listing as your suite of products grow. Now this was really counterintuitive to me, uh, in the first go, because, um, I wanted to do something like this. I wanted to say, you know, annual pro access at 59.99, and, you know, put something like unlocks pro access or whatever. And the problem with this is that it's going to display this description name for all countries and regions. So this price in the description name might not be the actual price that they end up paying because remember, uh, there's differences between the currencies and exchange rates, right? So if I'm in Canada 
it's going to be $79.99 for me. And if I see this in the subscription display name, it's going to be really confusing and it's going to make me pause and stop in my tracks and not go forward with the purchase because I'm not sure what's going to happen next. So uh, there are other ways to uh, grab the grab the currency and grab the price. So you don't really want to put this in here. Um, so we can go with um, go with the recommendation here and just call this Pro Access, and this is the display name. Let me show you where this information shows up in an App Store listing or on the screen where the user manages their in-app subscriptions. So if you scroll down just a little bit more, you'll see here um, when the user manages their subscription in the settings of their phone, uh, they're going to see the subscription group display name up here. And then you can see the subscription display name, which we have just said was Pro Access, that's going to show up over there. And then below that, you're going to see the price and the duration. So you don't need to restate the price or the duration in the subscription display name. All right, so let's go back to our App Store Connect and let's save this localization here. And then the final piece to configure this specific subscription is to provide review information. Now you're going to have to put a screenshot of where it shows up in your app, what it looks like, and also some notes for the reviewer. And when this passes and is approved, then it's going to be available for sale. The problem right now is that we're just doing development. We don't really have any of this information yet. Um, but in order to sort of get this subscription to a state where we can actually, you know, use it in our development process and test it and see it, uh, we actually have to put in a dummy screenshot. So I've prepared, um, actually, let me just tell you how you know the size. If you click this little question icon and you click learn more, you can see down here it sort of explains what all of the fields mean. But down here, this app review screenshot. Uh, if we're if this is a in-app purchase for iOS, you can see that the screenshot must be at least 640 by 920. And so I've just created a blank 640 by 920 image, and that's what I'm going to put in here for now. That one right there. And you can see it's just a gradient. You can use a solid color; it doesn't matter. And we're going to save this. Now, in the future, we're going to provide the real screenshot and some actual review notes before we submit the app for purchase or for review, I mean. All right, so now let's go back to uh, in-app purchases. We're going to configure the monthly subscription. Now, this is going to go by a lot faster. In fact, it's pretty much the same thing except for you know the duration and the product ID and, and the pricing. And so feel free to fast forward through this part. I'll just also move a little quicker. So I'm going to add it to the same subscription group because it's unlocking the same level of access. And I want to let the user switch between monthly versus yearly. All right, so we've got our new monthly in-app subscription. So again, let's choose the subscription duration this time to one month. I'm going to hit save and let's add a price. So here I'm going to choose USD at, uh, where is that, $9.99. So hit next. All right, I'm going to go with the defaults and hit create. Okay, let's save this. And then let's go back to the ones that finishes saving. All right, let's go back to our in-app purchase and scroll down and add a localization for English US. Again, this is going to be pro access because it's unlocking the same level of access. Let's hit save. And then let's add that screenshot that I had as a placeholder. And we're going to hit save again. All right, let's go back to in-app purchases here. The last thing we're going to need to configure is under subscription groups, 
you know, the one that we created to house the two, uh, the two in-app purchases, we actually have to add some localization strings for this as well. So you can see here in this group, there are two levels. They're going to be able to switch between the two. And right here, you're going to be able to add localization. Okay, so this one actually gets displayed to the user. This reference name just shows up in our reporting, uh, but this subscription group display name shows up when the user manages their subscription. So let's go back to the documentation. As you can see there, uh, it points out Ocean Journal subscription. So that's exactly uh, what they're going to see for this string here. So I'm going to say uh, rev cat demo subscription. Let's just call it that. In the app name display options, you can see down here, uh, the app name is up there, Ocean Journal. And the reason why it gives you two options, just use the app name or to use a custom name is because um, what a lot of people do for their app name in the App Store listing is they uh, put a lot of keywords and, and uh, subtitles into their app name. So it might be something like RevCat Demo dash the best tour app on the App Store or something like that. You know, it wouldn't just be the app name because um, people like to use that space to uh, maybe rank for extra keywords or to be more descriptive about what their app does. So you're able to use a custom name if that's the case. That way, it's not going to have all those extra keywords and subtitle information uh, in your subscription, you know, in this managed subscription part because it would look pretty messy. So here, you know, I would use a custom name and I would just put RevCat demo. That way, in the future, if you change the app name in your App Store listing, it's not going to affect what the um, what they see here when they manage their subscription. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. You can see here right away those change. They were saying missing metadata, and now they say ready to submit. We're not going to actually submit it. We're just we just need to get it ready to this state um, for us to be able to work with it even in development and testing. All right, so now we're done in the App Store Connect portal. We've got our in-app purchases configured. The next step is to work in Revenue Cat, where all the magic happens. All right, we're doing awesome so far. We've configured the in-app purchases in our App Store Connect portal, and now we're ready to use Revenue Cat. If you haven't gotten your free revenue account yet, sign up for one at cwc.to slash revcat2. Again, I don't get compensated in any way if you use that link, but it will let their team know that we're interested in more in-app purchase and app monetization content. So make sure you use that link if that's what you want to see. Now I want to turn it over to you. Have you ever tried to implement in-app purchases in your app before? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below. And lastly, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. All right, in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to use the Revenue Cat platform. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.